So good morning, everybody. I hope uh, some of this, you have come to join us. We've got three really interesting sessions. Um, first session by Tanya is actually um, videoed because very lucky lady, she's in Australia. Um, some of you may just be mopping up after Ask the Expert. I do hope some of you have um, joined that and there are more during the course of the day. So please do. I know it's a packed day, but please, as Sue said this morning, if you heard her, uh, we can obviously um, send you the box set so you can catch up on anything you've missed. So I have a short bio, if I may, about Tanya um, before her video starts. So Tanya is a registered midwife, head of course, Bachelor of Midwifery, School of Nursing, Midwifery and Social Science, Higher, Higher Education Division at CQ University in Australia. She's a registered midwife with over 22 years of international midwifery experience. She qualified as a midwife in England, UK in 1997 and has enjoyed a number of diverse midwifery roles since then. Tanya spent two years working as a midwifery field worker for Doctors Without Borders in a number of countries. She's also practiced as an HIV specialist midwife in central London, has held senior roles in a standalone birth centre and a number of birth suites in the UK NHS trusts. Since moving to Australia, Tanya has worked nationally in tertiary settings in all areas of maternity care. She's now Head of Course, Bachelor of Midwifery at Central Queensland University and is based in Brisbane and is undertaking doctoral studies to explore the lived experience of being bullied as a midwifery student whilst on clinical placement. Normally I'd say welcome to her, but we'll do it virtually. So welcome and enjoy Tanya's presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya Kappa, and I'm a midwife and academic working in Brisbane, Australia. I did originally undertake my training as a midwife um, in the UK in the mid 1990s and worked in a range of maternity units in the UK and abroad and came to Australia in 2006 and have been practicing um, as a clinical midwife and academic since then. So today I'm going to be presenting to you the findings that relate to the data I collected from UK based midwifery students as part of my doctor research study that explored the experiences of midwifery students that have been bullied whilst on clinical placement. Um, I chose this topic as it was somewhat personal to me for several reasons. Firstly, I myself experienced some degree of bullying when I was a student. Um, secondly, I've witnessed bullying as a, as a midwife. I'm sure that most of us in, you know, in, in this conference can say that we've seen or, or um, been, you know, been um, the target of bullying ourselves at some point in our career. And finally, as an academic, I, I've um, often had students come to me in tears um, saying they wanted to withdraw from their course because they've been bullied um, and, and they don't want to be part of the midwifery profession. So viewing bullying, I guess, from these three distinct angles led to my decision to undertake my PhD on this topic. Um, I felt that it really was a topic that warranted further detailed exploration. Um, and I'm pleased to say that my thesis is complete. So just to provide a bit of an introduction to the topic of my research, I'll just start by talking a bit about bullying in the broader workplace context. So we know that almost half of all employees in the developed world have experienced workplace bullying at some point in their working lives. And this may be um, either being a target of bullying or witnessing others being bullied. And it's become such a common problem now that it's... Um, considered a significant public health issue for adults. So workplace bullying generally occurs in workplaces where power imbalances exist and the closed system of the workplace um, provides both the opportunity and environment for repeat offences to, to occur. I'll talk more about how that can differ slightly in the student context in a moment. So Workplace bullying is often separated into two main types, vertical violence, which relates to the target of a person of lesser power, so a midwife bullying a student, um, and horizontal violence, which is where um, the targets are tense or are of the similar level to the, to the bully, so midwife to midwife, for example. So it's um, believed that 
but uh, workplace bullying is responsible for a number of long um, and short-term absences amongst employees and it's very costly. It can cost employers uh, millions of pounds per year due to sickness and trauma, um, which is experienced by targeted employees and is actually the most common cause of um, work-related stress and illness, interestingly. So coming back into our context, the, um, the hospital or clinical context, um, Hospitals and healthcare settings in general are um, known to be places where workplace bullying can thrive. And it's thought to be partly due to the enclosed environment um, and obviously the historical entrenchment of hierarchies that I'm sure we're all aware of. And it's believed that the stressful working environment doesn't really help and further perpetuates the, the issue. So the issue of workplace bullying in the maternity um, setting has been well, uh, reported over the past couple of decades. I mean, we as midwives, we work in fast paced and inherently stressful environments, um, which unfortunately does lead to it being a place where workplace um, bullying does occur um, frequently. Um, and as early as the mid 1990s, this issue came to the attention um, of uh, midwives and academics when a number of papers were published that reported upon the phenomenon. And sadly, you know, two decades later, over two decades later, its research continues to suggest that bullying is continuing to happen in midwifery uh, and it leads to um, career burnout and, and a number of uh, midwives choose to leave the profession entirely due to um, uh, workplace bullying. There is uh, a limited amount of um, literature that now suggests that this problem extends to midwifery students. As part of my doctoral, my doctoral research, I undertook a systematic review of the literature, um, which is in the reference list, um, and that demonstrated that there um, are midwifery students experiencing bullying, and um, the vast majority of um, the literature is more quantitative in nature. So I felt that um, a qualitative, a detailed qualitative study was required to explore this phenomenon further because we know that it has a number of short and long-term impacts upon not just the students themselves, but key stakeholders such as employers and universities, the care um, provided to mothers and babies is impacted and obviously the long-term sustainability of that profession of midwifery can be impacted. So what is actually considered bullying? Well, bullying is often underreported because people don't always know exactly what constitutes bullying. And there are several terms that are used to um, describe bullying or refer to bullying in the literature. So terms like mobbing, bad attitude, personality clash, brutalism, intimidation are all used. But you'll often hear in our healthcare setting, um, the term, used, uh, term bullying is mainly used interchangeably with workplace harassment, violence, discrimination um, and aggression. So as my slide says, there is no clear consensus in the literature on what exactly constitutes bullying, but Boyle and Wallace propose bullying is a person's perception of repeated negative acts such as harassment, intimidation, exclusion, isolation, hostility, character assassination and constant criticism. So bullying, you know, the, the, the definition of bullying may vary from one context to another. Um, and although a lot of the literature has aimed to provide um, a definition, generally bullying is assumed to be repeated and long term. It's, it's not a one off event. However, Boyle and Wallace 2016 dispute this and believe that in the student context, a one off episode of poor treatment or inappropriate behaviour can have a lasting adverse effect upon students. And I have to say, uh, from my own anecdotal experience with students, this is the case. I'll often receive calls from students who have had one bad experience that's put them off midwifery and they plan to leave. So the aim of the study was to explore the experiences of midwifery students in the UK that have been bullied or harassed whilst on clinical placement. This presentation actually forms part of my larger study, which also explored the experiences of Australian midwifery students as well as those in the UK. So I've just extracted the UK specific data and analysed it for the purpose of this presentation. 
So before I discuss the methods um, that I used to undertake the study, I just wanted to talk briefly about some of the, um, the challenges that I faced gaining ethical approval to undertake the study due to it being on such a sensitive topic. So I had originally planned to undertake semi-structured interviews with participants, but this did raise some concerns um, with the University Ethics Committee for a number of reasons. So Firstly, I was in the unusual um, dual position of being both an insider and an outsider. I'd been bullied myself as a student and I was obviously a midwife. So I was um, you know, perceived because of that of being in um, a position of power. And the other important thing to um, acknowledge is the fact that I, as a midwife, um, have mandatory reporting requirements. So if I were able to identify a student or a perpetrator or knew of a, um, a particularly, you know, adverse um, incident, I had a mandatory requirement to report that. So the Ethics Committee deemed that if this study were to be allowed to go ahead, it would need to um, enable, I would need to enable the participants to remain anonymous. Um, so the decision was taken that the sur a survey would be developed and it would be delivered by an online anonymous um, platform, which was really actually quite good because anonymous surveys are really well suited to um, collecting data on sensitive topics such as bullying. And it did actually enable me to collect some really rich detailed data. In total for the whole study, I collected over 100,000 words of data and over 50,000 um, specifically relating to the UK students. Uh, so that's fantastic. So I use the well-known um, platform SurveyMonkey. Um, and because of having, you know, the, the ease of access um, and, and it being anonymous, I um, had a lot more participants um, than I had originally anticipated. I think had I undertaken interviews, I'd expected maybe 10 to 20 participants if I was lucky, and they were happy to expect. I ended up with, um, as I say, over um, well, 120 participants in total, 53 um, of which were from the UK. Okay, so um, a qualitative descriptive approach was selected um, to undertake the study and qualitative description is um, considered appropriate when you're exploring topics that have received little research focus to date. And as I said earlier, systematic review of the literature that I undertook demonstrated that there is very little detailed knowledge out there about the student's experience. Um, and I also wanted to produce new descriptive knowledge that was useful to midwives, managers, um, education providers, policymakers and researchers um, to assist them with, um, you know, basically to create a starting point for the development of further knowledge in this area, um, such as, you know, development of solution focused research um, with the aim of developing an appropriate needs-based intervention. So as I said, after some, ethical, after some adjustment, ethical approval was given to conduct the study. I recruited the participants via two Facebook groups. One was for midwifery students and then midwives that have experienced bullying. And the second was a group specifically for students um, to network across the world. So with permission from the group administrators, I placed an advert a total of time, five times over a six month period. Participation in the study was entirely voluntary and there was no reward provided for participation. The potential participants were asked two um, screening questions prior to taking part. And what the first one was whether they were a midwifery student in the UK and um, in any part of the UK and working in any type of unit. And the second question was whether they had experienced what they perceived to be bullying whilst they were on clinical placement. If they were able to answer yes to both questions, they then entered the Survey Monkey page, which set them through both an information sheet and a consent form. Um, due to the sensitive nature of the topic, all participants um, were provided with contact details for relevant support organisations should they need them. Um, the students were then asked 10 demographic questions and six open-ended questions about their experiences. And as I say, around 50,000 words of open-ended data was obtained, which was fantastic. All data was then analysed using Brown and Clark's six-step process. 
So there you can see the six questions the students were asked. They were asked to describe what happened, but not to say anything about who the person was or where they were. They were asked how bullying impact had um, impacted them. They were asked if they had considered withdrawing of their pro withdrawing from their program or reconsidering their career choice. They were asked if, it, if they felt the organisation had fostered the incident. They were asked if they felt the organisation could do anything to change. Um, what was happening and finally they were asked if they had previously reported any experiences of bullying and if not why not. So just quickly the demographics of the participants so I had 53 UK based students, 51 were female, 2 were male, 5 were already registered nurses, 48 were direct entry, um, they were aged between 18 and over 50. The, the students were placed in very small units that conducted one to 50 births a year, right through to large consultant led units that had over 5,000 births per year. And there were various stages of their training, ranging from the very first quarter of their course right through to the final quarter. The vast majority said that English was their first language, and 50 spoke English at home, and three said they spoke German, Arabic, and Czech at home. So just to provide um, some context, I've just included this slide. This provides a summary of some of the types of bullying that students um, that took part in the study had described to me. So they frequently spoke of being yelled or shouted at, sworn at, and even threatened. They were humiliated and laughed and joked about, um, particularly in front of other staff, students or birthing people. The students also um, talked about being left out and ostracised. They, they were um, excluded from handover meetings. They were, weren't given meal breaks or they were completely ignored. The students spoke of being failed or given poor grades by midwives that they perceived didn't like them. Whilst others um, spoke of being um, denied the opportunity um, to um, care for um, labour and birthing um, people and were given mundane tasks to, to undertake instead, such as you know, photocopying, making beds, tidying up um, the cupboards. Um, it, the students also felt that some midwives abused their position of power by refusing to sign their student books at the end of the shift uh, or by throwing items of you know, equipment on the floor and demanding they pick it up. Um, one student actually spoke of receiving online threats and abusive messages through social media. Um, and some, a couple of students, three students spoke of uh, actually being physically touched by midwives, had their hands slapped away or they were shoved out of the way um, for one reason or another. So the five main themes that I found um, through thematic, thematically analysing the data collected as part of the study work, dysfunctional student practice supervisor relationship, physical and emotional effects, it's the culture, impacts upon learning and clinical confidence moving forward. And due to time constraints, I'll now provide you with a brief overview of the theme supported by the student quotes. At the end of the presentation, there is a list of references and also further reading, which will provide you with the references for some of the papers that I have published out of this research, which will provide you with more details on the findings. So the first theme um, relates to the student um, practice supervisor relationship and how on occasions that was somewhat dysfunctional and they spoke about the mentor um, or the practice supervisor as being the most common perpetrator of bullying towards them for example Angela shared the mentors are the worst a few a good few have made fun of me in front of other staff they refuse to answer my questions and expect me to know stuff I haven't studied yet the students also um felt that the midwives were in somewhat, I guess, of a, a dual role or two, they had two distinct roles and at times they were quite contradictory. You know, firstly, they're expected to um, provide, you know, safe, competent, women-centred care um, to mothers and babies, while simultaneously providing mentorship to the midwifery students. Two participants, Clara and Billy, said they felt they were often um, seen as a burden or being in the way. Clara said, I said, hello, I'm Clara, I'm working with you today with a smile, and I'd get an eye roll in the flat, OK. While other students also referred to um, eye rolling and exaggerated um, size, they don't hide their displeasure. That's what Billy said. The students also frequently described 
um, being treated like they were outsiders by their mentors. And this was particularly the case in the birthing areas, interestingly, where it was perceived that teams of midwives that had formed strong alliances with each other um, were very comfortable in their working environment and very comfortable with the behaviours that they were displaying. And the students feel that this did result quite often in um, increased levels of bullying. Sandra, for example, illustrated this by saying, I've been humiliated in front of other staff or women and, and I've been told I'm incompetent. Tessa said, my allocated mentor isolated me from herself and the other midwives during meal times. She criticised my practice, ignored me as much as possible and provided no teaching or guidance. And then she failed me. The second theme related to the physical and emotional effects, not just upon the students, but also upon the women that the, um, the students were caring for. So the vast majority of students um, spoke about experiencing a number of physical discomforts. So many talked about having episodes of you know, frequent nausea, vomiting, you know, diarrhea, or bowel. Um, they also spoke of having tension, headaches, generalised body pain. Asha, for example, described how she was physically sick daily. Still makes me shake just thinking of how they made me feel. It's affected my whole family. Um, many of the students who um, specifically stated that they had had no previous history of mental health issues said that being bullied on placement had led to them developing them. So anxiety, depression and particularly concerningly suicidal thoughts were reported. Um, a significant number of students had sought the support of um, their GP, a counsellor or a psychiatrist about their mental health issues. Um, and Jaya said, I've been signed off with anxiety and at present I'm unable to return to my degree. Janelle said, I've lost all confidence in my practice. Keith said, I was suicidal at times. So in addition to the effects that um, bullying had on the students themselves, the students also felt that it had impacted the women that they were caring for. The students um, described situations where the women had verbally expressed to them anger about how they were being treated. Claudia stated, one woman I was caring for said that I shouldn't let her speak to me like that. And it was also perceived that parents felt some sense of humiliation and um, embarrassment on occasions, particularly when they were being used props for bullying and drawn into the scenario. Sheena said the parents looked away, looked awkward and embarrassed and turned away. The other thing that I thought was particularly sad was the students felt that the women lost their sense of trust and confidence in the students' ability to care for them safely, particularly when their, um, their practice was being challenged or mocked. Janie um, illustrated this by saying, the midwife embarrassed me and said I was doing things wrong. The woman looked at me anxiously. We previously built a great rapport, so it was a real shame. The third theme related to the culture of maternity unit and how it was um, appearing to the students to be somewhat supportive of bullying behaviours and was just an inherent part of being a midwife. So this culture of acceptance, um, the students perceived, allowed this cycle of bullying to continue. So around 70% of the participants in my study referred to bullying happening in front of others. So these were often other midwives, doctors, students or birthing um, people and their families. And frequently the bullies would draw others in to participate in the bullying. And this was demonstrated by M, who said, it started off with one person bullying me. I had to report them as they humiliated me in front of all other staff and women. But as they, the bullies, were all close friends, things got worse and they all joined in. The students um, also frequently spoke of the established hierarchy in midwifery and how those at the top who were known to be bullies were feared most. Kat said there was one team leader who bullies everyone. Everyone is scared of her. Everyone fears being her next victim and goes, so goes along with her demands. Keeping their heads down was frequently mentioned. Um, midwives would often ignore or brush under the carpet bullying behaviours. Carla said everyone stood, watched and said nothing as she screamed crazily at me for standing in front of the handover board. Not one midwife said a word, they all looked at the ground. And finally, it was perceived that many of the bullies have been doing, you know, doing it as bullying as you know, bullying students for, for years or maybe their entire career and have been getting away with it. So they perceived themselves as being somewhat untouchable. Erica said, why would they stop bullying students? They don't get into trouble. We report them, nothing happens. They carry on behaving badly and that sends a message that bullying is okay. So, uh, theme four talks about the impact um, that bullying has on learning and clinical confidence and also development of skills. 
So many students spoke of how their confidence levels had been adversely impacted and, and it really set them back and made them feel unsure about their preparedness for practice. Dana said, I've lost all confidence in my practice. I can't sleep. I feel physically sick at the prospect of placement. I've, I feel so on edge, scared I'll make a silly mistake. Many students also um, talked about how the development of skills and knowledge were adversely impacted. Callie said, I question everything. I'm worried I'm doing something wrong and my knowledge is lacking. This only happens when I'm with certain mentors, though. So being the victim of or witnessing bullying obviously impacts the professional attitude of students and leads to them being or becoming socialised, I guess, into a culture that's accepting of bullying behaviour. Claire said, bullying is just part of midwifery. You just got to accept that. Furthermore, David said, you see some of the senior students starting to take on some of the behaviours, eat or get eaten. A couple of the um, participants um, noted that the midwives they'd worked with were also poor role models on occasion, um, and, and they were nervous to challenge some of the non-evidence-based practice that they'd seen. Um, Antonia said, some of the things I've seen midwives do, not safe for mother or baby, but I've never dared challenge them or tell anyone what I've seen. Um, the students really enjoyed um, working you know, in, in continuity models and felt that, you know, that on occasions those relationships that they developed with women have been devalued or interrupted because of bullying behaviours. The students spoke of being removed from birthing rooms um, to undertake mundane tasks, meaning that they missed the birth. This was particularly upsetting for them when they had you know, developed a, a strong relationship with a woman. Paisley, one of the students, talked about um, a woman she'd been caring for for eight hours, was fully dilated and pushing, and the midwife, a midwife who had been reading to me in the past called me out of the room to make beds. The woman voiced her upset with this, but was ignored. And finally, bullying leads to attrition, not just from the course, but also from the profession. So a number of students that participated said that they had no plans to practice as midwives upon registration. Glenda said, I've begun to look for other careers, so I don't want to work once qualified. I always dread what they'd be saying about me behind my back. So the final theme was moving forward and it talked about really how students manage the bullying experience um, and they realised very quickly they had to make a decision. So a number of students felt that reporting bullying was simply not an option. It replaced them in jeopardy of being failed, the bullying getting worse or they wouldn't get a job upon qualification. So they felt the best thing was just to keep their head down, keep quiet and comply. Jade said, I was determined to get through and just keep my head below the parapet despite seeing and hearing things I thought were wholly inappropriate and unprofessional. Very few students that participated um, felt brave enough to take on the bully, although one did, but she said, I took her on, asked her why she would had it in for me. She just ignored me and walked off and it carried on. A few of the students had put in complaints to the ward manager about being bullied. Um, and one did say that it had improved things, but others said that it ch changed nothing for them. And in fact, it got worse. Beth said, I put in a complaint to the manager. Never again. It got worse and the bully told others I'd done it. And they all started giving me the cold shoulder. I was labelled as a troublemaker. Two students did report to their university with mixed results. Um, they discovered that often academic staff had existing relationships uh, and friendships with um, clinical staff. And obviously they were fearful of placing um, their clinical placements in jeopardy. Cora said, I spoke to the university staff. It didn't help. They were friends with the hospital staff and said it was a tricky situation as they need clinical placements. It certainly was agreed by all students that um, they need to be better heard and appropriate support networks needed to be available um, and lines of escalation needed to be available to them. Some of them felt that the lines of escalation needed to be external to the hospital or the university. So, for example, that they felt that maybe the NMC should be managing um, complaints. And they also felt that the opportunity for them to give feedback on their mentors should be available as well as mentors giving feedback on them. Jemima said these bullies need to be answerable to the NMC and managers should discipline them better if feedback on one particular mentor is consistently bad. So just to bring everything together, so the main sort of conclusions and implications for practice are that, you know, workplace, a culture that um, is accepting of bullying behaviour enables this bullying cycle to continue. 
Um, clinical facilities and universities clearly have key roles to play in managing bullying of students. There does need to be clear pathways for students to escalate and have their complaints heard, and these need to be developed quickly and consistently utilised and appropriately actioned. Bullying, you know, we know can clearly um, adversely impact the quality of, of graduates and their preparedness for practice. And it's, it's clear that, you know, socialisation into a culture that is accepting of bullying behaviours can lead to early burnout. Um, and, and that subsequently leads to attrition and jeopardises the future sustainability of our profession. So thank you all so much for listening to me. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Um, there are references here, which I've been told you will have um, made available to you. And there are further two references that relate to this particular study. So um, thank you all again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much, bye. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, some very salient points and some very sad comments of course about how students have uh, experienced bullying so I think it's something that many of us can uh, relate to in various ways. <clears throat> um, I did just make a couple of reminders I know there were no questions that came up on the chat line but please do send them in we will pass them on to Tanya so that she has an opportunity to be able to answer those but some of the words that we used there I thought were um, very very sad the discrimination the harassment the isolation um, and that even just a one event can actually destroy a student. So I think all of us need to sit back and really think about how we come across and what we say in the time and the place. So again, I thank Tanya. I know she's not live, but um, she will obviously as well be able to get this um, as, a, as a book, um, as a box set for her. <clears throat>